Um, it looks like most of us are here. Um, so we are gonna go ahead and get started. Um, to all of our newly admitted Tridents, um, hello, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. On behalf of the International Students and Programs Office, I'm so excited to welcome you to today's session. Um, we also cannot wait for you to get here um, so that you get to experience UC San Diego in person. Um, if you've attended um, our previous sessions, um, you may know already who I am, but um, just to introduce myself again, my name is Karina Evanian. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm an intake advisor here at ISPO. Another really fun part of my job is that um, I get to coordinate our International Student Advisory Council, also known as ISAC. Uh, and um, a little bit about me is one of my favorite things to do. One of my hobbies is going to concerts. I also really love exploring um, all the fun spots um, in San Diego. And um, I'm super excited for us to bring this session to you because it's one of the most demanded session. I think it's one of the sessions that all of our students wanted to see. And it's a very special session today because um, we have um, our students. It's it's brought to students by students. Um, I'm also really excited to see Surf Check come to life um, because when I was a programs assistant in the office, I, I was one of the first people to work on creating that guide. So a really, really special Friday um, morning for me. Um, before we get started with all the great information that we've prepared, um, we wanted to share a few housekeeping things. Um, you are in listen-only mode, uh, which means you can hear us, but we can't hear you. Um, we're also recording this session, so as soon as the recording is available, it will be posted on inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu. This is also the place where you can visit to watch all of the past webinars we've done this week. Um, we also want to make sure that we get all of your questions answered. So please don't hesitate to submit those throughout the presentation using the Q&A feature on your screen. And for any follow-ups or, you know, some more advising specific questions, please visit icontact.ucsd.edu to connect with somebody in our office. And with that, we're going to kick it off with getting set up in the U.S., Surf Check Live, and I'm going to pass it over to our lovely student staff um, to tell you all about it. Hi everyone, I'm Zena. I am a senior. I am double majoring in political science and sociology, also minoring in film studies. I am also the English in Action program assistant at ISPO. I also do a lot of programming. Um, so what I'm really excited about this school year is to meet more new people and I do want to learn how to surf before I graduate. And yeah, I'll pass it on to Eunice. Hi everyone, I'm Eunice. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm an undergrad program intern in ISPO. Uh, I'm also an international student from Hong Kong and I actually just graduated from UCSD in spring 2023. So I'm no longer a student there, but I'm alumni. So if you need anything, feel free to check me out. I'm on LinkedIn if you wanna find me or check with me or anything. Fun fact about me, uh, you might still see me on campus because a lot of times I'm just doing pottery on UC in UCSD. Um, next slide, please, please. So most of the information we talk about um, today will be based on, a lot of them will be based on our search chat guide. So if you miss anything, don't worry about it. Um, please feel free to check out our search chat guide again. Uh, next slide. So first we are gonna talk about how to set up a phone account in the US. So in the US, we have some major providers such as the AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Spectrum. And we also have some smaller providers like Cricket, Boost Mobile, and Mint Mobile. I personally use Mint because it was shipped to me in my offer package. And I've been using it since like two years ago. I think it worked pretty smoothly most of the times. Um, so there are some differences between the major providers and some small providers. So there will be a price different. Um, the major providers can be more expensive than smaller ones. And the data speed sometimes is slower for those who use uh, smaller providers. 
And we do have a section on our surf check guide that has a detail, an um, detailed version of how to set up a US account, a uh, phone account. And so here are some information that you can find. And you can also request SIM cards from Expo if you need it. And there are some things you need to keep in mind um, when requesting a new phone account. So a lot of times you need some identification documents. So it could be a valid government issue photo ID, such as the driver's license, the passport, or state ID. And sometimes you do need your social security number or individual taxpayer identification number to apply for the phone number. Um, but it's not really usual. I didn't really have to use that information when I was applying for um, the phone account. And T-Mobile may require you to provide such information or credit checks to set up a phone account. But if you don't have SSN, um, you don't need. To, uh, you may need to provide the ITIN. Not all providers require a social security number, like I just said. So maybe look for alternatives if you can find any. And a lot of times you may need to provide a proof of address. So a document that can pro provide your current address, such as the utility bill, the bank statement or rental agreement. And since a lot of you are gonna live on campus, you can also provide your lease with on-campus housing. And for the account information, if you're transferring a number from another, car another carrier, you will have to <clears throat> need your current account information ready, such as the account number or the ping or password from a previous provider. And there are some ways you can pay for your phone account, such as the credit card, the debit card, and your or your bank account. And next, we're going to talk about the transportation in San Diego. Um, in our search track guide, there's also a section talk about transportation to go around campus or go around UCSD or San Diego in general, or maybe California in general. So feel free to check them out, but I'm going to talk about a little bit detail about it. So on campus, uh, UCSD campus is a pretty big campus. Um, there might be times that you have to walk through the classroom or it might take 20 minutes to walk from one classroom to another classroom because this happened to me, I need to run to my class. So UCSD have uh, scooters and scooters are everywhere on campus, uh, which you can rent it. You just need to down download app, a spin app. Uh, so um, then you can like use it uh, to go around campus. So spend offer a discount and unlock pass for Tridents. Um, and it also unlock the feed for each ride and lower income students ride for a little as 10 cents per minute. And feel free to learn about more in a spin at UCSD uh, website. And, but one thing about scooters is driving li driver license is needed. Um, so be aware of that. Another thing is um, UCSD have like a bike or skate shop. So if you plan to like get a bike or like skate around, that's also another way that you can go around um, classes or like go all around campus. Um, and if anything happened, like if your bike, something is broken or like something you want to repair off, uh, the bike and skate shop can also provide uh, like repairment for that. And they also provide different gear for that. Another thing is uh, UCSC shuttle. Uh, UCSC have um, in loop and outside loops shuttle that goes around our campus. So if you really don't have time um, and you don't want to run around on campus, you can also wait in the shuttle, wait for the shuttle to come to. And for off campus, uh, UCSC shuttle also provide ride for off campus. Uh, you can go around San Diego, a different San Diego area, such as Convoy, Hillcrest, Scripps, and also other places. Uh, feel free to check out the UCSC shuttle website. They'll have all the like different lines lined up or where you can go with the shuttle. And an other important line, important 
uh, public transit company. It's MTS. It's one. It's the San Diego public transit. You see it everywhere because it's it's the main transit that San Diego use. Uh, they provide bus, uh, different bus line and also Charlie line. Um, and for students, you can use U Pass for most of the MTS bus route and trolley route. Um, U Pass because you already pay for your it's part of the tuition. You already pay for it, so it's technically quote unquote free for students. Um, so I highly recommend you to like um go through the process of U Pass so you can use those tra transportation anytime. Um, another thing is you might or might not heard about it. It's Uber and Lyft. Uber and Lyft, it's like taxi. They provide taxi service uh, where individual can like go around different car with the car and using the app on their phone. Uh, it's a really easy process. You just need to download it, make a little account of it. And then uh, you just need to put uh, your location is from and to somewhere and then they would just connect you with a driver and then you can say all the information like when will the driver arrive all the information or how long would it takes um, in the app and the other thing is if you want to go let's say around San, San Diego County um, Coaster is one of the train line that can provide uh, you a ride to different um, from north to south to San Diego County. Um, it has a station between Oceanside to downtown San Diego. So if you want to explore more than just, you know, UCSD or like downtown San Diego, you can also go up there a little bit um, to Oceanside, um, Salon Beach to look around. Um, it's also part of San Diego County. It's also part of San Diego, sorry. And then let's say if you want to go around the U.S., you want to go out of state, if you want to go to, let's say, or little s, if you want to go to L.A. or San, Santa Barbara, you can take Flexbus, Amtrak, and Great Hall. Those three uh, provide different uh, buses or train to travel all around the U.S. too. Next, we're going to talk about mo the most important thing, where to get groceries. So, stores that mainly sell groceries in the U.S. include Bonds, Ralph's, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods Market, Aldi, Sprouts, Food for Less, and a lot of others. So, I personally like to go to Vons or Ralph's or Whole Foods Market and Trader Joe's because they are located really close to campus. By taking a lot of the buses that go through UCSD, you can go directly to the plazas that's like 10 minutes away from campus and you can get a lot of groceries from them. And there are some stores that have both groceries and some essentials. So for Target, a Walmart, Costco and Sam's Club, there is actually a Target located right on campus. You can see them located in front of library walk and for Walmart, i think it would be a little bit further and um, and so as costco and sam's club and be mindful that the that costco and sam's club do require a membership and pharmacy so ucsc does have its pharmacy but you can also look for other providers such as cvs and rite aids and walgreens and they have a CVS really close to campus next to um, Whole Foods in the La Jolla Village Plaza. So feel free to check it out if you want. And when you're moving in, you might need some furnitures or home essentials. And World Markets, Home Goods, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, and a lot of others are also the great places for you to visit. And uh, I know a lot of people will go to Ikea. But that one will be a little bit further away than, um, from campus. But um, if you want to go with like your classmates or your friends, and then you can just like Uber it there, it'll be easier. And there are also some international grocery stores where you can get groceries from home. So there are 99 Ranch, H Mart, Zion Market, Marukai Market, the Julia Mar market and there are like a lot a lot others located 
um, in different areas of San Diego. So there is this area called Convoy, and they have a lot of Asian grocery stores. Um, Miramisa also have a lot of Asian grocery stores. And yeah, um, these are all like the places that I have checked before. And I really like them. I also, you can order online from 99 Range or H Mart. And there are also uh, grocery shops that you can shop online, such as Amazon Fresh, We, Yummy Buy, and a lot of others. And there are some delivery apps which can you can get groceries delivered to your door, such as Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, or Postmates. And if you just want to get some stuff from campus, that's also totally fine. We have Target located on the second floor of Price Center West. And you can see it. It's just like located right in front of Geisel Library. And there's also General Store Co-op. It's a nonprofit student-run um, <clears throat> co cooperative commit committed to offering the campus community an assortment of school supplies, snacks, and convenience items at the lowest price. We also have different markets located on different in different colleges, and there are John's Market in Muir, Pepper Canyon Market in Warren, Seventh Market in Sevens, Rogers Market in Marshall, and Sixth College Market in Sixth College. Um. Thank you, Sina. And there's also one thing I want to add on about like groceries, like for example, on campus, if you really need um, like free groceries, you can also check out uh, basic need in UCSD. They also provide like groceries or like um, UCSD also have food bank. Um, I'll try it in pantry. That's what they call try it in pantry that also like provide like free produce for students that who, who have needs or anything. So feel free to check those out. Um, I remember tried in pantry. It should be across really close to its office. So um, if you want free groceries, like, like why not? Right. Uh, feel free to check them out. Um, and next thing I'm going to talk about is photo ID. So what is government's ID? So you heard about a lot of all times, um, all of documents saying that you need a government ID. Government IDs um include passport, driver license, or real ID. Right, it's uh, a California ID, and then um government issue ID. It's a document that includes your pictures and your personal information, such as your full name and date of birth, address, and even more. And this can be like driver license or like state issue photo ID or your passport. Uh, most of the time, international students are using their passport because um, when you get first get here, you don't get to like get your driver license or like state ID immediately. And um, why do you need ID? Why why is this so important? It's just because um. It's identification for you to like purchase um something that need ident identification identification is required. For example, uh, you need to be older than twenty year one to purchase alcohol. Or for example, something like that. Um, more detail of ID you can check out our surf check. I also put this uh put two of the important um slides here from our surf check um. But for you to check them out, they're pretty important. Um, also, I'll tell you what you need. Um, there's one thing that I mentioned about what to expect in DMV. Um, sometimes DMV can be really slow. And I would really literally plan a whole day for DMV. Um, you have to be really patient. It said it might take at least two or three hours. Sometimes it's long. <clears throat> Sometimes it can take longer than that. So maybe just plan a whole day that you plan to go to DMV instead. Um, it can honestly it can take more than three hours to wait to go through the pro process of your application. But yeah, that's all the information. And next, we're going to talk about UCSD uh, student ID. So your student ID can be issued from student finance solution, financial solution. Um, 
I know we're going through construction right now, but usually it should still be the student service center. Um, that's where you get your student ID. And then let's say if you lost your student ID, there's a lost and found office that you can ask them if they, if they have received your ID or if they someone picked up your ID, or you can also replace your I, uh, student ID too. And we also have a virtual campus ID, like your student ID can be virtual. You just have to download the UC SD apps um, and then log into your student account Then you should have your ID in your apps. And what are the use for student ID? Um, not only is your, it's for like identification, it's also you get access to meal plan at campus in different dining facility. And then you gain access to residence halls if you live on campus. And you can check out books and material through UCSC Library through your ID. And then you can also use it in recreation facility. And recreation, it's like a sports center in UCSD and get discount on different classes. They have a lot of fun, fun classes. So if you like doing sports, feel free to check them out. And <clears throat> You can receive service as student health service with your student ID too. And then maybe you, if you need to prove your ID to the bus driver, you like UCSC shuttle, you can also use your student ID for that. And then you can use it to par participate in voting or other associate student activity and get discount on AS events and then get discount on free admission to sport events and other on-campus activity, discount on different attraction events through the UCSD box office, and even get more discount on local arts and entertainment computers and more. If you wanna check out more uh, what discount we get like outside of campus, um, there is also a website that uh, lists all the UCSD student um, discount on it. You just need to like provide, like show your UCSD like your student ID to those people and then they'll give you a discount um for my experience I use it a lot in 99 Ranch which we mentioned earlier one of the Asian groceries I use it a lot because like you get like five I remember five percent uh discount off uh for 99 Ranch so I use it all the time Next, we are going to discuss some common social media in the U.S. So Instagram, as, may, as many of you have already know, Instagram is one of the biggest main platforms in the in UCSD that students' organizations and students use to share upcoming events and other announcements. Um, <clears throat> so usually, like what I do is that I follow pretty much every single account that's associated with the UCSD because they oftentimes they do a lot of social events and they provide a lot of like free food or free drinks and different like fun activities throughout the quarter. So if you follow up with their account and you can be updated on all the different kind of events coming up and that and so ISPO does have its own Instagram account. It's called ISPO.UCSD. So if you want to just look it up and follow us right now, please do so. Um, the English in Action program also have its own Instagram. That's UCSD-EIA. And we also have one for IPCs, International Peer Coach. And you can also look them up and follow us. Sorry, I'm going to take a water real quick. Yeah, I think Instagram is like a really great place for you to socialize with others, your friends. And so as Discord. So Discord is an instant messaging and social platform. Uh, users have the ability to communicate with voice calls, video calls, text messaging, medias, and files in private chats or as part of the communities that call servers. It is an important platform for students to exchange information about classes and socialize with each other while studying in American institutions. So when I first got here, I had no idea what Discord was. And people were like, oh, I created this Discord chat and they dropped it and they dropped it in the chat where I was taking Zoom classes and I was so lost. But 
Discord is just this basically like a like a chat and app. And a lot of students use it for like school or like club. And it's just like people share information about the class and they can ask questions about homework. And yeah, that's like mainly where you ask your classmates uh, what to do uh, with like a certain homework. And so it's supposed to well create a Discord channel for UCSD international students to ask questions and share information about upcoming events. Um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a business and employment focused social media platform that works through websites and mobile apps. Students use it to build up their network, expand their professional connections, and find employment opportunities. Um, so I personally use LinkedIn to find jobs. So and also to like build up your connections. That's gonna help your later career in life. Um ISPO does have its own LinkedIn, uh, and here's the link to our ISPO LinkedIn, and it's just like a great place for you to meet like alumni or current students to help you smooth it, your transition to the career life later on. And there are also a lot of other platforms where you can use, such as Twitter, Facebook, Be Real, or Reddit, and there are some messaging apps such as Snapchat or WhatsApp. Um, for videos, I, I'm sure a lot of you have already know, TikTok and YouTube are really big in the US. So let's talk about off-campus housing right now. Um, so some of the off-campus housing resource, if you're finding off-campus, um, you can feel free to check out our self-check guide. All of the resource is in there. Uh, you can find off-campus housing through there. Uh, for me personally, um, I never, I never leave in UCSD because I'm a transfer student. Um, when I first arrived here, I already leave off campus, and I find my my current apartment right now on um UCSD student off-campus housing Facebook page and they do have a lot of, like option to choose like a lot of times students will post their uh they would need a roommate or anything so it's a really convenient way to find housing um next slide please and what do you need to expect when you're applying off campus you need your documents um some of them do ask for a credit score history um in my case um i never experienced that I need a credit score history, but I know Sina also have her experience of asking her for a credit score history. So it really depends on each like apartments or like, each company. And <clears throat> a lot of times they ask for your bank statement and your I-20, that's for sure. <clears throat> they also ask for other document to show that you have stable source of income. It could be your pay stuff or your parents pay stuff. And um, if you like couldn't reach for the amount that they want, they ask for, they might ask me, ask you for a guarantor or a co-signer to just like make sure that you're able to like pay rent and just like, it's like a promise paper. And then if you have any legal concerns, feel free to reach out to our UCSD, offer a legal service for students. <clears throat> Another thing is you need to be aware of scams, like especially I talk about Facebook page. That's the all. that's all one thing um that you also need to be aware of um personally like how do i avoid scam it's like a lot of times if you can check that place in person it will be nice like uh or like um if you see like people ask you to pay rents through moneygram or other like unreliable places though so most likely there are scams too so just please avoid that um next slide please and literally uh in our self check guide have a whole page of how to avoid health scamming please make sure to you read through that if you're looking for off-campus housing um we don't want your money to be scammed to other people and just make sure you read through that and make sure all the things that you like doing for off-campus is not sketchy because like if you think something it's off <clears throat> sorry if you think something it's off 
may we consider it's a scam, you know, or like if you're looking, let's say you're looking at an apartment in person, it would be better to bring a friend with you just for your own safety too. And here we have some list to do uh, some things to do in San Diego. Um, please feel free to check our surfing guide, surfing guide, and um, there are tons of fun stuff to do in San Diego, and yeah. So here are here is a list of things to do in San Diego, UC San Diego. So. We have this website page called Student Event Calendar, and you can see on your right, and it has a list of all the different events going on campus throughout the week. You will also get a newsletter from UCSD every week that says, oh, what kind of events are going on campus? Um, there's also recreation. Uh, you can also see the a screenshot of their website on your right. So one of the first events that's going to happen is me at the beach. And basically, like, you go to the beach and, like, the recreation stuff going to show you how to surf. And I think every year they bring, like, a dog who can surf. And I just thought it was really fun. Um, there's also a craft center on campus under Six College if you're interested in crafting. Um, there's also this climbing gym that's located, like, closer to Warren. And it's totally free for our UCSD students. For swimming, we do have two swimming pools on campus, one indoor and one outdoor. And game rooms. So we have this one game room in Price Center and another one in Seventh College, which is going to be a little bit further. And we have Stewart Art Collections. So if you have seen some like art installations on campus, and such as the Fallen Star, it's probably one of these Stewart Art Collections. And we have a lot of, <clears throat> we have art galleries on campus. It's next to Muir College. So um, they have like student arts ex exhibits throughout the quarter. And we also have an amphitheater um, that has a lot of different concerts and events going on. So last year we had Nikki from 88 Rising coming to our school and her concert was held in amphitheater. And... They also have a farmer's market every week. I'm not sure if they're going to start doing it again next quarter, but I attended one of those last quarter. It was really fun. You get like off-campus vendor like, and a lot of like great food. Um, there's also the theater and dance department where you can check out if you're interested in any of their programs. Um, here are a list of Fun facts you need to know about the Stewart Art Collections on campus. So as I just mentioned, the Fallen Star, I'm sure you will notice that there is this little blue house on top of a building in the center of coffee, uh, in the center of campus, and that's called the Fallen Star. And there's also the Snake Pass that's right next to Geisel and the Warren Bear. I'm sure if you're from Warren, you have seen this anywhere. It's located in, in the center of Warren. And here are some things you can do in San Diego. Um, there's this Baboa Park that's closer to downtown San Diego. And it has a lot of museums where you can visit. So let's say, for example, the San Diego Museum of Art and the San Diego Model Railway Museum. Um, there are also a lot of <clears throat> more museums in San Diego. Um, such as the Museum of Contemporary Art and some other fun stuff to do, like Old Town, um, Farmer's Market at Little Italy, Bircher Aquarium. Actually, Bircher Aquarium is going to be free for UCSD students at the beginning of the school year um, for like a month or so. I think, I think it's going to be like free pretty soon. So if you're in San Diego already, please feel free to check it out. It can take a shuttle from campus to there. Um, there, are, <clears throat> there are also some really popular hiking routes around campus. So there's the Scripps Coastal Reserve that's really close to campus. And 
Um, Gliderport is like one of my favorite places to go whenever I'm on campus and wanted to relax. So it's basically like 20 minutes away from like the center of campus. But if you live in your C or Seventh College, then it's like five minutes walk for you. So it's this cliff that's next to campus. And when you walk down, it's a beach. Um, But be aware that it's actually a new beach. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, There are also different beaches around campus. Um, La Jolla Shores is one of my go-tos. And there's like a lot of UC students go there. And we have bonfire or just like, you know, a beach barbecue there. It's really fun. And Delmar Beach is also really close to campus, but you have to take a bus from here. You have to take 101 to get there. Um, Parks, there are a lot of different parks in San Diego. La Jolla Cove is pretty close. It's like a 20 minutes by bus distance. And Chicano Parks is also like one of the parks I like in San Diego. It really represents the Chicano culture in San Diego. And we do have some food recommendations for y'all coming to San Diego. Tacos for sure. Um, we have really good tacos in California. And we also have a lot of Asian food, uh, such as sushi and ramen. We do have some on campus. And also make sure to try some pizzas and desserts. Um, Leo Italy is one of the most <clears throat> famous um, food area we could go to. And Convoy, as I just mentioned, it's a um, Asian district where you can get a lot of Asian food from. And there's also um, Old Town where you can get a lot of Mexican food. And if you're thinking about doing a road trip in California, here are some destinations you can go. Um, I have personally been to, I think most of them. I haven't been to Palm Springs yet, but it's definitely one of my to-go lists before I graduate. And I have been to some of the amusement parks in LA and Anaheim. Um, I really like the Disney one. It's really cool. They have like really unique rides in, uh, in California. Um, if you have any questions, please please feel free to drop in the chat or ask in the Q&A sections. Hello. So we've had lots of good questions come in so far. Um, so the first one we're going to start with is there's a question that asks, what is the difference between dining dollars and Triton Cash? So from what I know, the difference is, is for dining dollars, um, you can only use like quarterly and sometimes maybe a little bit over for four quarter, fourth quarter, it's a little weird time. And for Triton Cash, you can use it like all years, any time that you want. And some of, some of the time, Triton Cash can be used off campus and, and on campus. But um, mostly it's on campus. Uh, but there's some off campus um site that you can be you might be able to use try and cash for example on on campus and usually dining dollar it's the name is it it's mostly for dining hall and like for food in general and try and cash for example you can use in the bookstore in UCSD um and then for dining dollar um. Sorry, but I know like, it's for usually mostly dining and try and catch is just like try and catch is just um, have more option to use it. I would say it, it just like um, sometimes because um, dining all come with the, your plan, your dining plan, whatever amount that you put in, you have that much, but you have to use it in a certain time. And then for try and catch, it's you put the amount, how many that how much you want to put it in. <clears throat> and then you use that amount and then you can use it throughout the year and not only for food and for other things too. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Eunice. Zina, anything to add? Yeah, I think for trend and cash, you can mostly use in like markets of your college, like just buy some snacks 
and ice cream, I think. Awesome. All right. Our next question is, um, when entering the U.S., how did you show your proof of stay within the U.S.? Did you download your housing contract or what documentation did you use? So um, for me, it's a bit of a different case because I only lived off campus, unfortunately. Um, so what I do is I just get a proof of my contract, but I don't think they usually would ask you for like your housing, um, the proof of your address. But I do think it's like, if you can keep one with you, it would be great, just in case. Um, I think, I'm not super sure about where you can download the housing contracts because I haven't, I never lived on one, but maybe you can like send an email to the, um, to the dorm and ask them if they can provide one for free. And also, if I may add to that, in regards to just supporting documents to bring with you, we do have information on our itravel.ucsd.edu website. I'm actually going to post that link in the chat. Um, as Zina mentioned, it's one of the supporting documents. Um, it is not required. Um, when you do a plan on arrival, just to reiterate some of those points, make sure you have a valid password, um, your valid visa. Um, as well as your I-20 or DS-219 documents. So those three are absolutely required um, to enter. And then if you're interested in kind of how to get other supporting documents, please visit the website I just posted in the chat. Um, generally for on-campus um, housing questions, we encourage students to connect with Housing, Dining and Hospitality, also known as um, HDH. Um, or graduate housing, um, if you live in graduate housing, um, those would be able to assist you with accessing your materials and kind of any information in regards to um, your dorms or, or your accommodations on campus. Um, if you're renting apartments off campus, um, connecting with your landlord or you know the leasing office that is leasing you the apartment, um, they should be able to provide those to you as well if you would like to have it with you when traveling. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Okay, so our next question is um, for utilizing the scooters on campus, is an American driver's license required or can you use an international driver's license? And if Eunice and Zena, I don't know if you know the answer to this question. So if you do, please go ahead. But if not, oh, go ahead, Eunice. Unfortunately, um, I don't really know because I don't really use the scooter. I usually just walk around campus. Um, but if you want to, you might be able to search through DMV. I know because um, it's different. Different states is different. Have different policies during scooter. I was doing research through that too, but I can't find it in that moment but um in what i know sorry um is maybe you can find it in, in dmv but california specifically do require like any they, what i know is is that any class of license you need to use the scooter you need any class of license um in order to use electrical scooter but in terms of like inter international driver license or american driver license that's one i'm not sure and also i know for international uh, international license there's also also policy of like you can only use it within a year and then after a year you would need a uh, american driver license so I would say in order to be safe, if you can and if you're able to do it um, and you think you're prepared for uh, to get a license test immediately, um, maybe just get an American driver license. It's just easier. And also like you can use it as a form of your ID too. Um, also for international driver's license, I think, I, it, I'm not super sure if it applies to every country, but at least in my case, I'm for China. Um, it's like you can use your driver's license for three months if you're entering the stay with using your tourist visa. But if you're entering as an F1 student that you have to get a stay issued driver's license. So 
Um, actually, I take took my test, like my permit test online, and I got my driver's license eventually. But I know it'd be like huge hassle if you just moved to San Diego. Um, honestly, I don't think a, like a lot of people who you spin like have a license, but I think it's like for your safety, it's better that you have it because like sometimes I saw there like police police officers that checked your. driver's license around campus if you're like spin using spin so i would say for safety and also for the law uh you may have to get one yeah. i'll also just add um please contact i put this in the chat um i ride at ucsd.edu for this question um they are the transportation experts around campus and so they will be able to provide definitive information on the type of license that's required to operate those scooters okay our next question is if i need to order things before i reach my dorm or my housing what is the best way to do that Um, again, like I never lived on campus, so I didn't have my personal experience like that, but I do have some friends who live on campus, I think. So I think there's like an Amazon hub where they can store your packages if you're ordering from Amazon, but I don't think it can stay there for too long since there will be thousands of students doing the same thing. Um, there's, I think there's like a locker room. managed by your dorm or like your college but i think just to make sure you can contact them or like shoot them an email first to ask if you can store your stuff with them first but i think most of the times it works um and also just add to this so contact if you are living on campus i would recommend contacting Housing, Dining, and Hospitality, that's HDH. Um, and they'll be able to specify different options for you in terms of um, ways you might be able to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that contact information in the chat, um, but we should be able to, to do that here. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so, Our next question is about the ISPO Discord channel. Um, I can say that it is not currently available, but we are in the process of creating it and will announce via our marketing channels when it's available. So more to come on that. We're very excited. And uh, our next question is to explain a little bit more about the differences between SIM card providers and what to consider. So um, Zena or Eunice, I'm curious if you wouldn't mind sharing, how did you all choose, how did you all decide which um, SIM card provider to go with? Yeah, Um. so as I mentioned, I personally use Mint because it was in my offer package and I set up before I came in, came to the US. Um, but I would say for like the major differences, I, I don't think there's like a major differences, between like the major providers or like the smaller ones it's mostly like the difference of price and um the internet speed so uh, for example for i think for mint we don't have our own like we are kind of like borrowing internet from like at and or another bigger provider so sometimes the internet could be a little bit slower for mint if you're in the area where a lot of people were using internet. And I I think it's mostly like the price where you can get a family plan with your friends. I think that's a thing that a lot of students do. And the major providers tend to be a bit more expensive and the smaller ones tend to be cheaper. Um, but personally, I don't think I have had have like a huge issues with internet speed. Although like on campus, sometimes there's like no service and also like the Wi-Fi, I'm not gonna lie, the Wi-Fi is not the greatest on campus sometimes. Um, also maybe it, so like the smaller providers may not have like international services. 
So when I was back in China, I didn't, I, I couldn't use my like American number because like they don't have service there. So it's just completely out of service. But maybe if you're using like a bigger provider, that could be different. So yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Um, our next question is, are there any other channels for international students to connect other than Discord? I think we also kind of like mentioned about it. There's also different like cultural org that like in UCSD. So another thing for you to check out like different org in UCSD, there's a website to it. If Karina and Grace can put a link on in it. Um, you can also feel free to check out all the organization that's in there. There's like the like Chinese, I think Chinese New Union, Chinese Student Association, like for example, those um student association. Um, you can check them out. They always put their Instagram or any type of social media that they prefer to contact with in there and that's how you connect contact with other students or like students with yours have same hobby same culture backgrounds or like um you know so you're interested to like stay connect with other people too yeah um also i think one of the biggest ways that i connect with other international students on campus was to go to ispo events so we're gonna have a lot of events coming out next week if you like in-person events, I would totally suggest you to go to those because that's the way where I get to know a lot of amazing people and get to make friends with them and we exchange socials after it and we can make up plans. So actually one, like some of my best friend right now, we met through ISPO and we were just like, we were just casually talking and like a, a friend was just like, hey, do you want to go play Mahjong with us? And I'm like, oh yeah, sure, dope, let's go. And and the next day we play mahjong and now we became best friends it's just like it's is just such amazing place where you could get to know a lot of people and also follow our social media and i think if you are already um answering questions or like posting your questions on the discussion board um if you have or on um, i tried in i think somebody it's on it's not like official ispo account but I think there are some students already starting like Instagram group, chatting group where you can like talk to other international students who are also new incoming students. And yeah. Thank you so much. I think it's a perfect segue to share with, um, with our attendees today a little bit about those events that Zina mentioned and kind of ways that you can get involved. Um, we want to thank you for all of your questions and we hope that this session has helped you a little bit to feel more comfortable about the process of setting up in the US. But to highlight a few, this is definitely not the whole list. Um, uh, we are offering meetups. So this is a great opportunity to get connected with other students. And a really cool thing about our interest group meetups is that they're hosted by students for students. Um, sometimes it can always be difficult, you know, to start the conversation or like know what to talk to folks about. But um, these are specifically about interests that you may share with other people. And so um, you can always about that um, talk about that shared um, love for the topic. So highly encourage you um, to visit iorientationucsd.com slash meetup to sign up for those. We also have more events happening during our welcome programming week. As you may know, UC San Diego bus tour did sell out, um, did sell out but um, you can still sign up for the wait list. It's a great opportunity to explore the greater San Diego area. Um, some of those um, parks and like popular spots that we've mentioned earlier in the presentation will be covered by our UC San Diego bus tour. Uh, we also have International Student Fan Fest uh, for those who are interested in participating and kind of getting involved with athletics on campus, attending the games. Um, we're going to be joined by a women's volleyball team, um, and it's a real nice little tailgate right before the game. So um, it's going to be happening um, next Friday on September 22nd. Um, and then um, a great opportunity to meet both international and domestic students is our international mixer. We host it in partnership with um, iHouse, um, and all of these events are Get CCR eligible. So if you haven't had a chance to learn a little bit about Get CCR, um, it's a great way of kind of 
doing all the fun things, but also kind of getting credit for, for doing all the fun things. Um, and if you're not familiar with our iEvents.ucc.edu, um, this is our calendar where you can sign up for all of these events. Global coffee hours, I may be a little bit biased because I get to coordinate this event for our eye orientation, um, but I highly encourage you to stop by. It's one of our most popular events. Uh, we also offer it throughout the academic year, but we'll have some raffles as well as really great pastries and coffee. Um, it's happening every day next week. Um, and the event is taking place between 10.30 and 11.30 a.m. in our Eucalyptus Grove. Um, this is also a guest CCR eligible event and the signups are available on our iEvents calendar. Um, for our socials, you know, if you are free more so in the evening, we do have um, International Graduate Student Social and GradPal Mixer. Um, we have International Peer Coaching Open House um, happening as well. And um, if you participated in our undergraduate Global Ambassadors Program, it's a mentorship program over the summer, we also have a gap mixer coming up for that event as well. This is just another screenshot of that um, iEvents calendar. Um, as you get familiar with it, you know there's different tags and different ways to kind of search for events that um, suit your needs. Um, but I highly encourage you to bookmark this page um, this is one of the best ways to kind of stay connected with our office and also find, you know, your community here at UC San Diego. Um, a really fun thing that we get to do during orientation is giveaways. Um, we want to kind of reward your participation and also kind of get to know you and do something fun for everybody. Um, so um, the rules are pretty simple. We ask that you follow us on Instagram. Um, and again, our handle is ispo.ucsd. Go ahead and like this post um, and then um, please take pictures during eye orientation and post it on your channels um, and tag us. We would love to, um, you know, reshare your pictures and um, just kind of, again, celebrate this amazing time that is orientation. Your feedback is super important to us. Um, this is how this session came to be um, from your request and from requests of students from students like you. So I'm gonna leave this slide on for a little bit. So please go ahead and scan the QR code um, to provide feedback for this session. Um, a few final reminders um, as it are important, you know, to make sure that um, all of the regulatory pieces are taken care of. Please, please, please submit your check-in form via iPortal if you have arrived. Students have 10 days from their arrival to submit the check-in form, and this is really important to make sure that we activate your CVIS records. Um, also, register for other orientation sessions. Um, all of those should be available on our iorientationucsd.com website. And lastly, please connect with us um, if you haven't had a chance to uh, check out our services or if you have follow-up questions, um, we're always available um, and you can explore our services by going to icontact.ucsd.edu. And with that, we would like to thank you all so much for joining us. Um, we know it may be late or super early in the morning um, if you're joining us from outside of the US, but we hope that this session has helped you feel comfortable um, about the process of setting up in the US. Um, we really enjoyed sharing all of these resources with you and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in.